Well, hey YouTube, it's Petey Two Finger. It's like two o'clock in the morning. My wife and I have been working. Man, I've been whew, a lot of work. Here's what's on the menu. I'm waiting for uh, JFET daughter boards so I can finish the Marshall Super Bass preamp. I'm building a uh, an amplifier in in a blue Hammerite tachometer case. What's that? I was thinking of the other corner, so I was like. So yeah, it's this blue uh, like tin box, metal box, and uh, it's a case for a tachometer that I bought at at Goodwill. It didn't have the tachometer in it. Well, it's kind of like an old toolbox. So the idea is, I'm going to I'm going to use a, a Class D amp board that's rated at 100 watts. I realize it's not going to run at 100 watts, so maybe maybe calm down before you attack me for exaggerating the spe the specs. But when you when you buy the unit, the chip is a 100 watt chip, so. I call it a 100 watt chip because that's what it is. Anywho, it's going to be a Marshall Super Bass preamp. So it'll have bass, treble, mid range. Does it have presence, gain, and I think a master volume? Um, I'm going to uh, use a spring reverb tank. The idea is. Uh, well, we'll talk about the idea later. So that's the one project I'm waiting on those. Like I've got, I've got it here. Here's the. Uh, this is the parts bag. Um, the tensionometers. Why is there only two pots in this bag? That doesn't look very promising. Two pots. Oh, there's a whole bunch more pots in here. It's a Tata order, an order from Tata. So here is, I know I've shown this before, this is the... the PCB and 220PF, 250PF. I'm looking for 68 picofarad. So yeah, um, that's that. That's one project that we're going to try to document as much as that as possible so you guys can enjoy uh, enjoy that at home. What's this? Marshall. Okay. So, uh, the, the other thing is I, I decided that uh, I'd like to build a preamp unit, a battery powered. It's not going to be a pedal. It's going to be in this cable box, this little cable box. So it's going to be a Yamaha ME1 base preamp, which has a master volume, a frequency knob, and then a switch for flat, scooped, boost, uh, some kind of frequency switch on it. Uh, that's uh, Paul in the lab has a Vero layout for that. So I'll build one of those and then a compressor. And to start, I spent quite a bit of time reading up on compressors and I've got three CA3080 chips. I've got one or two, I think I have two, uh, LM, is it 16,000? They're, they're the OTAs that you need. Now, they, they have these uh, real simple builds, which are the really cheap compressor and then the flat line compressor. People really like the flat line compressor, and then I read uh, extensive notes on modifications for that. So if you're looking to build a modified flat line, like an improved flat line, I did a Vero layout for that. I modified an existing Vero layout, so uh, that's basically none of my work. It's all people that have built a bunch of them and learned how to improve them. 
So I took, I interpreted what they said they would do, because they didn't put up like, oh, this is the layout for my mod. They just talked about it. They were like, well, you really should, you know, strap up 68 picofarad capacitor across R3, and that limits the frequency on the op amp, which helps keep it quieter. So all of that type of stuff, you know, uh, there's a lot to it. And I don't want to go over that right now. That's not the purpose of this video. But uh, the idea is inside of this cable box is going to be a battery pack or packs. Um, and it'll, it'll be the Yamaha NE1 preamp and then a compressor. Now, I've got stuff coming for a... Demeter compulator and I'll probably buy a PCB for that. They're eight bucks. I probably won't mess around with the Vero. Anyway, um, the flatliner, I went through my Vactrols. I have a drawer full of Vactrols that I got and they're all different. And I found uh, I've got a baggie with maybe ten in there that I can try to audition and see if I can get the flat line to work halfway decent without buying a uh, a real Vactral. These are uh, there. There isn't part numbers on them. I have no idea what they are. They're all over the place. But I got some that were close, so we'll see. And and also by um, socketing by putting sockets on the Vero, I can replace components to adjust for the. Uh, using a different Vactrol. So I, I'm thinking how this is going to work is I'll build the thing, I'll put the compressor in it, and then later on um, that compressor will come out and I will install the Demeter copulator in here. So it's going to be a if I can I'll put an uh, external another battery pack in it so it'll have multiple battery packs and the uh, one of them there'll be an external power jack so you'll have a short cable she can slap her uh, other processor up here or a like an auto wah or a distortion it'll be, be an, another nine volt power pack so she wants to run her zoom b1 and i know you're thinking well why don't you just use the compressors because they suck the compressors in the Zoom B1, I'm of the opinion that they don't really, they're not that great. I may be wrong on that. I may have not figured out how to pro, uh, program it yet. But what I'm going for is an X. I want, I'd like to have a, a box that has a base preamp with a little EQ and then a compressor in it. Is that okay? So yeah, we're building that. Um, I'm going to put a buffer in it. We've got this uh, Riverhead Unicorn base that's uh, not active, and I like I like goose in the base signal. I like EQing it and all that. So it's something to do. Play around with it. And this chassis, like I've had this forever, I've been saving it. It, like I said, it's going to end up uh, with a, a lot of knobs in the front of it. At least one, two, three, four. Uh, probably five or six knobs and a switch or two and maybe an LED you know so yeah that's this project that we're working on it's going to have a buffer like a JFET buffer and then so my wife pulled those bombs we didn't have some capacitors and I went and uh, found what we didn't have here this is uh, don't be vague ask for sprig that's what it says here i thought i'd share this with you guys don't it says uh don't be vague ask for sprig i don't know if you can read that or not it's kind of tough to read there we go don't be vague ask for sprig and these are uh we we needed their their ceramic their old ceramic capacitors look at that we needed a, and they're all in here. There's only a few missing. Like this pet package has. Uh, these are 
Oh, 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 one, oh, 500 volts. Ugh. Super heavy duty. So yeah, my brother uh, dug this out of some, uh, like a hoarder guy's basement and gifted it to me. Along with some uh, box full of radio, old radio shack stuff. I got a phase lock loop chip. I got a sine wave generator chip. I got uh, some other cool stuff that they don't make anymore, you know. Some nice, uh, what do you call it, uh, switchcraft style, like heavy duty old uh, quarter inch, or do you say, 6.35 millimeter connectors. Uh, just nice stuff, like one 134. They were actually uh, originally transistors that leaked, and they cut one leg off and resold them as diodes, germanium diodes. And I use those because they're really great clippers and distortion or overdrive circuits. They've got a they've got a thing going on. It's a different type of distortion, and uh, I like that. So, yeah, my older brother, uh, thank you so much to him for thinking of me with this stuff instead of putting it up on eBay and waiting for somebody to pay him for it or not pay him. He did the right thing and gifted it to me, which was really great. So I'm excited about these projects. Like I said, I'm waiting on the JFET daughter boards to arrive so I can build my uh, Marshall Super Bass preamp. That's going to be that uh, blue tachometer case. It's going to have a... 100 watt chip amp, a class D. So there'll be internal battery banks with 18650 cells. If you don't know what an 18650 is, and you're watching this channel where <laughs> I hold them up all the time. But yeah, it'll be uh, probably three different power banks. One is going to run the power amp, one power bank is going to run the preamp, and one power bank is going to run the spring reverb three separate power banks. Now, if there's room and I feel I need it, uh, I heard the EQ on the Super Bass is really good, so I shouldn't need it. But I've got a Lumen EQ, which is a modified BDE Sonic Stop PCB. And this modifications they did, butterfish. They did, uh, you can uh, lower the frequency of the high end and raise the frequency of the low end. Because the way that they designed it was at the extremes of the frequency spectrum for guitar. So you can kind of rein those in and make it more like a normal EQ. It's a really cool uh, AION, A-I-O-N, effects. Um, They've got a sale right now, a 25 or 15, per, I think 15 percent. Uh, but yeah, they're they're a PCB supplier. I had ordered my JFET daughter boards from Pedal PCB. I ordered eight JFETs, and when I went to uh, check the box of eight daughter boards, somehow I it was a one, and they didn't contact me. I wish they would have sent me an email like, hey, I think that like before we ship it to you. Do you want to uh, pay us a little more and then we'll send you the proper amount? Because I had to order the remaining. Uh, their shipping is kind of expensive. So I found them on eBay for really cheap. Uh, they were 10 cents as opposed to 60 cents or was it 50? And then the shipping was non-existent. So I ordered those from eBay, and with this uh, coronavirus thing going on, I just, they haven't showed up. So anyway, I wanted to show off this Don't Be Vague, Ask for Sprague. Really cool. Isn't that cool? Couldn't have ended up with a better home. Uh, and today it ended up saving the day. Super special thanks to Gompti for pulling not one, not two, but three bombs today. So I'm going to have some fun. I've got some stuff coming here. Like I said, eventually we're going to be able to build a Demeter compilator. Probably replace that flat line that's going to go in there. And I mean, we'll see. It's Nothing's written in stone. It's Once I drill the chassis out, it's got the holes in it. I can put whatever I want in there. 
if I want to turn it into a spring reverb. You know, it's it's like the way I'm going to do it is probably more of a modular approach where I can have Velcro pads that I JB weld down or hot glue cardboard down to the metal and scrape that off when you need to change something out. I wanted to show you one more thing. This is some really neat... Uh, I got this at Goodwill. I have no idea what the deal is on this. It's a, it's a, it's a giant nut spring, okay, and it's got a it's sealed. I don't know how that's sealed on there. If you can pull that thing out of here, pull the bottom out of it. It has an S stamped on the bottom and this nut. Anyway, you can uh, unscrew this. And I believe these are salt and pepper shakers. I believe you um, you go uh, crack this open and shake it and the salt comes out. Or you can, uh, this is like for camping, not in bolt, like for, for dudes, this is like a man's, huh, manly. Anyway, what I use it for is I put screws in it, chassis screws. When I'm going to build a pedal and you buy it, you get the uh, chassis, there'll be four screws. You put them in here and then I screw this tight and I set it up here on my thing and it sits and waits until I'm done. Now I've got another uh, another thing to show you here. This is a Chinese or Japanese, I think it's Chinese, a little porcelain bowl and I've got a, a piece of dum-dum, rubber dum-dum stuck in there and this is a screw bowl. I throw screws in there when I disassemble stuff. So that's where I hide my screws. See how we work? Don't be vague. Ask for spray. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Could this not have ended up in a better place? Anyway, you guys, uh, we got the the blue the, ta the tachometer case amp, the mar the super bass with the spring reverb, and that's going to be all analog. Like I said, I've got a I've built I've been building a lot of these things with the Class D amp boards. Right now, we've got a 200 watt. Uh, what's well 100 for the sub and then 50 by 50 for the right and left PA channel. And that's uh, the, the box with the mixer, 8 channel mixer, with the MP3 player built into it. It's all in one, uh, except the power supply for the power amp sits outside the box. So that's the main thing that when you see us jamming outside, that's it. That runs the PA that the bass plays through. The backing tracks, the, the drum tracks, and the guitar, everything goes through that. I'm get, adding a center speaker, which is going to be a 12-inch Fender speaker. And that's the deal with that blue Hammerite 19, uh, well, Marshall Super Bass. 1970, I think it came out. It's called the 1992, but I think that's the model number. That's not the year it came out. So, as it is of now, I've got a another ramp, which is 100 watt. It's the same chip. Amp, but it's got a uh, Rockman front end on it. So, yeah, maybe we'll get out there. Maybe we'll head over there and do a little playing. But in the meantime, I've got all these wonderful projects lined up. Hopefully, we're going to be filming a lot of that for you guys to check it out. So, I wanted to let you know what we've been doing and give you an update. And I know I do a lot of updates on this channel. Uh, so, I, you know, sorry. Anyway, we'll see you soon. Good thoughts, good words, good deeds. Peace. Don't be vague. <laughs> oh, and uh, huge thanks to Voodoo Highway. You you won again. You won, you won the... Uh, I mean, I, I got to see if anybody... I, I, I'll give it a few more days, but I think I'm thinking... I could not stop laughing at your song titles. So that's that was a good sign. I'm guessing nobody's going to top that. And uh, thank you so much for your thoughtfulness. I, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. I'm overwhelmed, and I cannot sincerely thank you enough. Voodoo Highway. Check him out. Go sub to his channel. He's a good guy. All right, you guys. See you soon, and peace.